Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill, and I have only three solar panels where there ought to be four. What happened with that? Before we get into that, I want to apologize for the wind noise because it is a very windy day here in the flatlands of Illinois, and so headphone users, you may want to exercise judicious use of the volume control before we get too much further in this video. How fitting, it seems that there's a lull in the wind right now. So I've warned you, okay? <laughs> This is a Harbor Freight kit, total of 100 watts worth of power output here, and it ships with four solar panels, but I am down to three because something unfortunate happened to the fourth one, and at first I thought this might have something to do with the fact that Bizarre Furhead was working on his Jeep in the garage. He moved these panels so he could put the Jeep in there, and when he put them back together, unfortunately, he got some of the wiring wrong and ended up connecting two of the panels to one another. One of the panels is fine, the other one stopped working. And I don't know if the failure has to do with that little miswiring episode, or if it's just something that went wrong because the wind has blown these over a couple times. It's really hard to tell. But I'll show you what's going on here. This is the afflicted panel. I've already started to take it apart, look at it, see if I could find anything real obvious. I turn it over, it's in the sunlight. Got the voltmeter hooked up to it and I've got nothing. And at first I would have told you that I was very suspicious of this little circuit board here, which contains a current limiting resistor for the LED and a diode. A diode that's probably for anti-reverse polarity protection of some description. I'm not really sure, but I wondered if maybe that diode hadn't failed shorted and sacrificed itself to save the rest of the panel and all the other panels that were hooked up. But then, quite by accident, I happened to flex this panel a few times and lean on it. And when I did, I noticed that I was getting sporadic readings from the attached multimeter. Now, I probably can't get it to happen here on video, but I'll try anyway. I'll put some weight on it and just see if I can actually get it to work. I was actually contorting the frame when I did this. And I may have to find a way to do that again. Well, here we go. When all else fails, involve a pickup truck bed. We'll see if I can break this thing. I probably can. Yep, I can't get it to work now. <laughs> I'll try flexing it the other way. There we go. So there's a bad connection somewhere. And knowing my luck, it's probably in a place that's basically inaccessible once this thing's been put together at the factory. And it could certainly be a byproduct of having been connected to another panel in reverse polarity. Something could have burned out or burned into inside. But we'll see if there's anything I can do to rectify the situation. I'll take this thing a little further apart than I have. And I'll just inspect all this exposed wiring and see if I can find anything. Maybe I'll get lucky. I don't know. Guess we'll find out. In the best case, It'd heal itself, but no matter how many times I've flexed and abused it, that hasn't actually happened. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this zipped apart, and we'll take a look at it. Now that is very interesting, and it might also be a suggestion that luck is actually on my side with regard to the location of the breakage in this solar panel's wiring. I initially was afraid, especially since flexing the panel made it work again, that the breakage was likely to be in an inaccessible location somewhere within the substrate or other portion of the panel. I decided to take this thing apart, and as I went deeper and deeper into it, I started to realize that the only likely outcome was going to be the unfortunate and very likely result of simply breaking the solar panel's glass, and that'd be the end of the line. But then I turned my attention back up here where the wiring actually connects to the panel itself, and after digging out all of this rubber mastic-like material, I discovered that the positive terminal from the wiring harness going to this thing just fell off. I don't know what might have done it, if it was sloppy quality control during manufacturing, if it was the wind having blown this thing over on its face several times, or if it was the misadventure that Furhead accidentally subjected it to. But take a look at what happens now when I put the panel in the sun. You'll see that the open circuit voltage increases dramatically, and no matter what I do to the panel, it's stable and it's reliable. So the only thing I have to do here in order to effect a fix is simply figure out a good way to reattach this wire to this little metal stub 
that's coming out of the solar panel. Now I must be careful with that because it's very flimsy, surprisingly flimsy really, and if I end up breaking that it probably will be game over. So I'm not sure what the best way to go about fixing this would be, but I'm inclined, especially since I'm a professional lazy person, to forego soldering this back together, simply clean this wire up over here, strip it back a little further, wrap it around this and seal the thing up again, and just see how it happens to last. Yeah, it's a quick and dirty fix, but if I can get away with it, I'm lazy enough that I'm not opposed to that notion. Now, by all outward appearances, everything certainly appears to be happy yet again. But, that's only by outward appearances, because this multimeter's voltage measurement range only puts an absolutely minuscule load on this panel. That's why the voltage that's being displayed is so high. This is a nominally 12 volt panel. And when it's actually hooked up to something like a solar charge controller, the much lower resistance will allow more current to flow and will drag that voltage down. So let's get everything hooked up and see how it actually happens to go together once we get it there. And as further proof that it is a very windy day, would you look at what that naughty wind did? It blew my truck door open. <laughs> And, of course, the solar panel isn't the only thing that's broken. It seems that the outdoors has been very unkind to the extension cable I made, so that I could put the panels that much further away from the charge controller, allowing them to collect more sun before the shadow of the garage overtook them and caused charging to stop for the day. On the day that I first put all of this together, I must have been feeling pretty industrious, because, as you can see, I did actually solder it together originally. But it was no match for Mother Nature. I probably should have done what I did with the other solar panel, the one that I picked up at the Ham Fest a few years ago, and used that heavy-duty rubber power cord style cable, because it has held up much better in the sun and the rain and the elements in general. But for now, I've just gone ahead, tied things together here. It'll do for now. It's just a quick and dirty test. I'll repair it and go again at some point, or maybe I'll think up a better way of doing this because it looks like my connector isn't too long for this world either. Now just because I so happen to be a professional bad example, I just got to wondering what the short circuit current output of this panel might be. Now this is a test you probably don't want to make for too long, especially with a cheap meter and cheap test leads like the ones you're looking at right now, but for a moment I don't think it'll hurt over one amp. Now we'll just go ahead and take a moment and make sure that the polarity is correct because I strongly suspect that the charge controller might very well not like that and I have no idea how well protected it is against abuse. So we'll just go ahead and check things out here and they certainly do look good. Now the way that Harbor Freight originally had this set up, all four of those solar panels came together in parallel and then they plugged into the charge controller using that lonesome barrel connector that you see off to the left hand side. Unfortunately, someone, probably me, happened to fat foot it, crushed it flat, and broke it. Thankfully, they provide another means by which other solar panels can be attached, so we'll just go ahead and make use of that. And it certainly appears that I have timed doing so very well because it looks like, although we are charging right now, that we could use a little more solar panel capacity than just the one panel that's presently working, because I've got an inverter and a telephone hooked up to it. Well, there's everything all hooked up, and that's the kind of current that we're getting out of the single solar panel at the moment. Of course, those batteries are pretty well fully charged, so it's not going to be doing a whole lot right now. The charge controller is just going to be cruising along. Now there's a heavier load. Even with that beefy old box fan plugged into and running from the inverter in the garage, you can see that the solar panel still isn't outputting a tremendous amount of current. There are many possible reasons for that, but just a few of them I can think of right off the bat. First of all, the battery state of charge is likely to be very nearly full because I don't put much of a load on them and I haven't run them down in a very, very long time. They just sit and float charge all the time until I do something like haul out the battery-powered lawnmower or plug in a big old inverter to them. There's also the matter of the incredibly cheap test leads that I should not be using along with the incredibly cheap multimeter. 
These things are made of wire that is little thicker than a couple of human hairs and that alone could be presenting significant resistance to the flow of electricity. And of course there's also the current shunt in the multimeter but at this low of a current it certainly should not be presenting an undue resistance to the flow of electricity. But oh well, things are definitely working again so it's time to hook up all these other solar panels and get the whole thing working the way that it should have been. So thank you as always for watching and as always I am interested in hearing your constructive commentary.